Hello and welcome to another episode of Lockdown Dads. I'm James Miller, editor of workingdads.co.uk, author of Dads Don't Babysit and father of two children. And I am joined as always by... Ian Dinwiddie. I'm the founder of Inspiring Dads, a coaching business that helps stress dads to balance work and fatherhood. And this week, really delighted to be joined by an old friend of mine. Um, it is Will Champion, the drummer of Coldplay. Um, Will, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Uh, very pleased to be here. Excellent. And Will, it's, it's great to speak to you. We, um, it's been a while. We missed out on uh, seeing each other last summer, which is a bit of a shame, but hopefully this summer we'll get an opportunity to play a bit of hockey together. Fingers is, crossed. Um, yeah, Fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah, it's looking looking good at the moment. So, Will, we kick off um, kick off the show each week with asking people a question that's become increasingly loaded or more loaded in the last year or so, in terms of lockdown, how people are coping. Is how are you? I'm doing I'm doing pretty well actually. Thank you very much for asking. Um, definitely an air of optimism, I suppose, given the recent news announcements and the fact that the sun is shining and uh, and there's a I think most importantly, there's a sort of there's a, a, a bit of light at the end of the tunnel for my kids. I think who have who have been suffering the most throughout this uh, this period. So um, generally feeling pretty positive, I have to say. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna go straight into the you know the pop star stereotype here. But how does it? You know, clearly it's been bad for the music industry in general the last twelve months. So there's that to have to deal with. But I mean, would you usually be on tour or planning a tour or something? And has everything sort of stopped for you in that regard? Um, it's, I, I suspect we'd be a little bit further down the, the, the line than we would, than we are now. Um, we hadn't, on our last record, we didn't actually tour. We, we made the decision to not tour um, for a number of reasons. Um, but actually it turned out to be, quite prescient because it, we did a, a, a live broadcast with no no crowd um, in a, in Amman in Jordan um, and sort of broadcast that and that's something that's obviously been replacing a lot of live events for lots of people um, in our business but uh, I think we're working which has been great we've managed to find a few uh, a few moments to kind of uh, play together and to record together which has been brilliant and so we're just sort of planning the next move, really. And um, so we were, we wouldn't have been touring right now, but uh, we would certainly be, I think with our, with, that, with a lot of our work, you have to plan so many years in advance. Um, and I think because of the, the amount of con concerts that have been cancelled last summer and this summer, I think everything is sort of rolling over. So we're sort of, we're, we're, yeah, we're a bit, just a bit behind, I would say. It's not been drastically terrible. I just think we're lucky because we can afford to wait and we can, um, we can choose the right time to do it for us. But I think so many people were on the, either on the cusp of breaking through and when you go out on those big first headline tours and things like that, I just feel so sorry for so many people because momentum is a hard thing to kind of conjure up. And when you have it as a, a band or an artist or in any in, in any kind of walk of life and sports or whatever it's it's really you've got to try and grab it when you can and and for so many people that opportunity has been ripped away so i think we're we're very lucky that in this situation that we're in and so yeah we're just trying to bide our time and come up with something great and, and we'll see when we can get that out Imagine that first gig, though, that first gig out of lockdown is going to be, I mean, for, for whoever it is, it has the first gig on the 22nd of June, never mind. And then your every each band has their first gig. Like, yeah. in time. No, there'll be a lot of, there'll be a lot of, um, a lot of people dusting off their instruments now thinking, OK, now we better get rehearsing because it's been a long time. Um, <laughs> how about you this week, Ian? How, how are you? Uh, I'm all right, actually. Um, I'm pretty good. I think, you know, as, as Will, Will was sort of talking about, the good news and this kind of sense that, uh, some sort of normality is starting to kind of, re you know, raise its head and start to move towards that school. Countdown to schools, we've got one more week of homeschooling, um, which is great. Although it's kind of strange. I think my, my son, Sir Struan, has got a little bit of sort of Stockholm syndrome. He's got so used to being at home. We said, oh, are you looking forward to going back to school? He's like, mm, not really. I quite like this. I quite like mm. doing things at my own pace, which is a little bit kind of sad and concerning. Last couple of days, he's been more like, ah. Oh, you know, I'm looking forward to playing football. Hopefully, we won't lose as many. It's like, yeah, hopefully not, because you know, it gets a little bit depressing for all of us. It's like win, lose, batter the opposition, lose by a goal. So he's quite excited about that. I've got really into Marvel this uh, this last couple of weeks. I've never late to the party, admittedly. Um, I never really, not I've not been a comic hero kind of 
um, superhero kind of fan, I was having a look through making a bit of dinner, going through uh, Disney Plus, um, came across WandaVision, quite enjoyed WandaVision, realized it's, um, I didn't know much about Marvel. So I've started. So the last two weeks, I've watched Iron Man 1 and 2, Thor, uh, Captain America, and I'm now on uh, Avengers Asse Assemble. So I'm fast tracking through the entire back catalog of Marvel, and I've really enjoyed it. And it's been um, so it's been great. And and as Will said, sun's out. So yeah, that's a good thing. Are you, so yeah, are I'm pretty happy. Them in, are you watching them in the order they were released, or in the order they fit into historic chronologically? I mean, you know, you got to think about this stuff if you're going to start. I mean, I no spoilers because I haven't started one division yet, but I will. But that seems quite a, an odd place to start because it looks yeah. weird. Okay, don't spoil it because yeah. I am going to watch it. One. I was thinking about this. One division. If you start with one division, it's a bit like starting with the Mandalorian, having not watched any Star Wars. There's a whole lot of stuff. It's just like no idea. So I'm watching them in release order because really? uh, I did do a bit of research. It's like you know, uh, yeah, you could. Um, there are various pros and cons. Uh, I've missed the Hulk though. I've missed the Hulk. Apparently, it's not very good, and yeah, it's not yeah. on Disney Plus. So you know, yeah, hey, that's 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 my excitement for this week. What about you, James? What have you been up to? Uh, well, yeah, I absolutely agree. Everybody. The weather is like the big one. I mean, you know, to be honest, the government and it's it's good news doesn't really affect me, but the, the weather does because I don't really, you know, the government's just, uh, but you know, <laughs> sunshine, can't argue with that. Um, but Joe, I mean, as I as my kids put it on at the start of the week, Joe Wicks broke my butt. All right. Uh, my, I put me back out. I did a rather over enthusiastic, uh, what was it, uh, a burpee spinning thing on Monday. And the old wound, the old back went a bit. And that was, you know, it, it's not a big deal. But at the same time, it does open your eyes to, and you know, I don't want to sound careful how you, how you phrase it. But it does open your eyes slightly to what it's like living with pain, to people with proper conditions, you know, real serious conditions that are there all the time. Because it's just really annoying. Mm. For, I mean, it's easing up now. And I'm like, okay, I've got to a point where I know it's going to be okay. You know, it's getting, over the weekend, it'll be fine. But um, yeah, it does sort of get you down, I have to say. But uh, you know, sun's come out at the end of the week, yeah. so um, and it's getting better. So things are very much on an upswing. But it's it's an interesting. It's not a, not an experience I would wish on anyone. And you know, it give, <laughs> makes you more empathetic, which of course is uh, a big theme of this podcast and indeed of the the lockdown and all the rest of it. Uh, and a big theme of you are not the man you're supposed to be. The book that I recommended last week, which I read this week, and you can read the review of that on workingdads.co.uk. Um, so yeah, it says, you know, there you go, sunshine, basically, isn't it? Sunshine's yeah. cheered us all up. Bit of sunshine, that's what it's all about. Right, let, let's mm. let, let's go on to the path. That's what it's called, the next feature. And before I start, I do want to just, where are my working dad's hat to some extent? I want to ask you a couple of very uh, straightforward questions to answer both the working and the dad section. Obviously, you're a dad. How old are your kids? I have three kids. I have a 14-year-old daughter, and I have... Uh, 12-year-old boy-girl twins. And oh, so, so knocking it all gold, bloody. <laughs> We've been having some issues with mobile phones this week, so you're right in, right in the yeah, thick of that. Been right in the sweet um, spot, yeah. And on the, just on the working front, I mean, this is not the question I usually ask of the, the few pop stars that I have interviewed in the past, but um, what is your working status? Are you employed by Coldplay? Or are you like a freelancer? Are you a self-employed? I was technically self-employed, yes. Ah, well, that explains why Coldplay, of course, are big fans of the shared parental leave for self-employed people campaign. As, uh, Absolutely. Know, signed Olga Fitzroy's uh, uh, petition repeatedly. Yes. Um, Olga, uh, she's brilliant. She's a, she's like uh, she's like Bruce Wayne. She is. She's she is amazing. Extraordinary, yeah, extraordinary sound engineer and producer <laughs> by day, and uh, politician and campaigner by yeah. night, or whichever way around. But she's brilliant. Yeah, series four of this, if it goes to, I don't know what's going to happen with this podcast, but if it goes to series four, I'm thinking today, why have we not had Olga on? I don't know if you're what's aware of question, that. She, she does the shared, mm. shared parental leave for self-employed people yeah. campaign, and she's also yeah, involved. She's brilliant. Um, pregnant, uh, then screwed as well, of course. Yeah. Also have a book out. Um, so uh, we've established your, <laughs> your your credentials as a, as a dad and a, and a worker. Self-employed, um, yes. Talk us through the path then. I mean, in terms of your you know, your fatherhood path, because how does fatherhood fit with, um, you know, being a pop star, going on tour, making records? Uh, is it an easy fit? Um, I mean, like anything, I suppose, it goes in as distinct stages and sort of phases where things become, you sort of swap out uh, sets of 
problems and, and logistical things set switch one set for another and, and I think that really it really mirrors sort of parenthood in general in, in that when they were very little they came everywhere with us uh, my wife and I were on tour with them all the time for the first five years uh, I guess until until it started to become um, more important that they stay in school and then by that time we're, we're I guess we were very lucky because we all kind of had children at a similar time in, within the band and the need to balance work and, and family life uh, was similar for all of us. And so we made a decision to kind of prioritize or make sure that any um, arrangements that we've made for traveling would be, you know, we'd, we'd have to make sure that we were, we were thinking of our families as well. So the majority of touring happens in the summer. So we, we can take our kids with us generally um, in touring Europe is was a bit more straightforward for us because uh, you can get home most nights um, or we're not away for very long. But on the bit on the most so on the most recent tour we did in 2016, the sort of Headful of Dreams tour. I think the longest I was away from my kids and my wife at any one time was was about two weeks. So um, having that as an 18 month or nearly two years worth of, of shows. So we we just it takes a lot of planning and it takes a lot of organisation, but Ultimately, it's it's the, it's what keeps us happy and what keeps us able to commit and to really throw ourselves into the music, knowing that we we have happy happy home lives as well. So, it's um, it's it's not as difficult as it would be. I mean, when we were very when we were first starting out, before we had kids, we would be on the road for nine, twelve weeks at a time in a in a minibus, you know, and, and that's not conducive to bringing kids along with you. So, um. I just I think we're just very fortunate in the timing and it just meant that we could really uh, tailor our touring and our schedules around the kids holidays. So the majority of the touring happens in school holidays. Did that early experience um, mean you were well set up for lockdown and that you were used to those nine, 12 weeks being chipped up with the same people? And I suppose, did it, did it actually, <laughs> did it mean you were well, well set up for parenthood? Because um, there are some, I'm not suggesting any in Coldplay, but there are some giant uh, man children in the rock and pop music industry and uh, <laughs> have to be looked after. I don't know, maybe not from your point of view, perhaps so much. I don't know. But I mean, yeah, I did those experiences set you up for, I say, uh, family life and or lockdown? Uh, I suppose so. I mean, I think everything's, you know, you, I think just being with being with people is 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 the great educator and, and you, you know, learning all the time. And um, I think we it is like a family being in a band um and it because because you're you're sort of there are four different people involved with different slightly different you know different personalities and and all sharing the same goal and the, the same aim and wanting to get to the same spot but sometimes have different approaches or different ideas about how to get there and so one of the big things that we realized early on was that in order to make sure that we were going to stay together and for the band to be healthy we had to concentrate as much on our sort of interpersonal relationships as we do on our musical uh you know friendships or our musical kind of connections so we we just learned very quickly that it, that you need to that the that the people in the band that the the chemistry between its members is really the the most sort of prized possession that you have and it's the really it's the thing that separates you from everyone else and you know there's a, there's only so many notes in an octave there's only so many chords you can play and, and so many ways you can do it but the thing that can't be replaced is the is the people and so I think that's at the core of our band is recognition that the four of us are really it's it's really crucial uh, that we keep that we all stay healthy and happy and and learning when to give each other space learning when to step in and say you know to put someone right or so it's it's it is uh, that's very much like a family you know learning learning how those relationships work and how they and when they when they're at their best and when they're suffering and, and how to kind of how to help people when they are suffering and there are times will when you plan in time where you're not going to speak to each other or maybe off the back of a tour where you've been in each other's pockets for such a long time that actually you need to you need to draw a bit of a line because you know 20 22 23 years or so I guess of making music together and of touring and of, of spending a lot of time together is you know it's it's a long marriage in some in some ways well mm. relatively long 
I mean, I think there's a natural kind of um, waxing and waning anyway. You know, we tend to, when we're on tour, it's very intense. And then in the studio, it's very intense as well. But we're also, there's plenty of time in between that. And so we don't, there's, there's not really a time where we say, right, no one's going to talk to each other for, for a year. Um, we did have a, a, the best part of a year off in 2018. Um, which is the first break we had really since 1999, I think. Really. Um, so that was, um, and like everything, like in lockdown, when people, you know, suddenly you had all these articles about people saying, yeah, what, do you, what books are you going to read? What, are you, what language are you going to learn? How, what, how many box sets are you going to get through? And I think like a lot of people, the time came and you're like, I don't have time for any of that. <laughs> I've got, this. if anything, I'm doing more because, you know, the kids are at home and you, there's more meals to cook and there's more stuff to do. And, so in that year that we took off, I think I had grand plans um, and very few of them materialized. But what was nice was just to be was just, just to know that I was at home and, and to be to be there for every, you know, every little moment in the in as the family were growing up. So, yeah, that's it was we, we don't necessarily need to build in time away from each other because there's plenty of opportunity throughout our normal schedules, because now even more so. Um, Chris lives in America, so we mm. we tend to have blocks of time when we're together. So we 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 pencil in two week chunks every, you know, as as often as we can, and we know that outside of those, then that's that's time that we're not we're not in each other's pockets. So it works out pretty well. I, I got to pick you up there, Ian, because that can't be right. Twenty odd years, you got that wrong. Everybody knows that parachutes just came out a few years ago. Because if it's been twenty odd years, that would make me in my forty. I'm and I, so. I am quite clearly, I don't know, about 20, what am I, 20? <laughs> oh, yeah. And my friend is saying, oh, I've got this record called Parachutes, it's quite good. <laughs> that, happened, that happened really not very long ago. That was yeah, so not afraid so. Long ago. Yeah, afraid not. No, and, and you, um, of course, you had the pleasure, Will, of um, you know releasing a documentary where you got to watch yourself back from being in your early 20s. And it's something we kind I'm of... I'm going to stop you right there, about. Calling it the pleasure. I, I'm going to have to pick, pick you up on that. <laughs> well, we did joke about this, I think, at the time. You said it was quite unnerving watching yourself as a... I mean, we would have been like 1920, I guess, in some mm. of the early footage in, in that yes. documentary. I mean, that must be quite... I mean... It, I mean, it was amazing. I mean, I thought it was an amazing documentary. There, I think there's a piece where Chris Chris says to camera, you know, watch this space in two years' time. We're going to be really famous. Or words to that effect, and it cuts. My daughter was like, "How did he know? How did you know?" It's like, well, he didn't know, did he? It's just amazing. You know, it's amazing to have that that sort of journey recorded. In yeah, I mean, it's it it is it is and it isn't. I think they're <laughs> they're great. I think it's a lovely thing for people who like our music and like our band, and that's fantastic. And um, obviously. If someone told you that that you were going to get an opportunity to to look to look at yourself as an eighteen year old or a nineteen year old and, and sort of questionable decisions that you might make about fashion or uh, or whatever or general behaviour and demeanour, you know, that someone said, "Don't worry, we're going to release it and people are going to watch it in the cinema," I think you might you might um, reconsider. But yes, definitely. No, it is. It is. <laughs> what, what's amazing is is to be able to see that the the core. What, what was what was there at the beginning is still there and I think that's the most important thing for me from that from that film is that um, I can just see the same people and the the same uh, friendship at the core of it and, and that's really what I was talking about before is that it's if I could go back and tell that person that 18 year old you know acting like a twit and on that film don't worry because you're going to be all right and you're going to work really hard with your mates and you're going to do so many brilliant things and you're all still going to be friends at the end of it and you'll have your ups and downs but you're going to have a, a wonderful ride and I think knowing that would, would have given me great comfort so it's it's that's a very sweet side of it um, and it, it is fun watching it there's some funny moments obviously there's a lot that doesn't didn't go in lots of things that probably couldn't or shouldn't go in <laughs> but you know it's a, it's a fun film and also brilliant because it was made by our friend Matt Whitecross who was also at UCL with us mm. back the day so it was a lovely a lovely little moment what's the what's the secret to that then because um you know i think it's fair to say most I don't, I've called you a pop star. I don't know. Do you, do you have a problem with being a pop star or a rock star? I, I mean, are you a rock star rather than a pop star? I go for uh, I go for soft rock dinosaur. <laughs> right. Most bands don't get to become soft rock dinosaurs because uh, they don't last that long, right? And mm. 
clearly there's an element of, you know, you are at the end of the day four men in a very male dominated industry. Um, and I suspect that might be part of the reason a lot of bands don't last that long is that there is a certain amount of the, the toxic side of masculinity feeds into it. And you seem to have avoided that. Is that an intentional thing or you know, have you just got lucky? Or, uh, you know? I, I suspect there's definitely an element of, of luck in it in that we were all put in the same place at the right time. You know, we're, people, I, I often think about that, that there was a, a lot of people in our halls when we were in our first years at university that were musicians and that were people that were looking to, to find other musicians to play with. And so that strikes me as being very fortuitous that, that it was, I think there's definitely something about the personalities of the four of us. We have, it's, they seem to work well. And um, I think had that been slightly different, had the dynamic been slightly different, I think we would have, it, it would be questionable whether we'd still be around. So I think there's, it's just a, it's a mixture of luck and, and the right types of personality and, uh, lots of hard work I think is you know uh, it's so but but yeah it's a difficult one to difficult one to say because yeah it's just it is the luck of the draw where you're put on this earth isn't it and who you're put with and I think it's we're very fortunate to have been put in in the in the place that we were and we made the most of it um no I don't agree uh, <laughs> I mean yeah all right there's a bit of luck in it but I think you're perhaps doing yourself down there I think this, you, the hard work is surely a big part of it that you've put in uh, you know, here we go, we're going into the whole masculinity stuff, but you've clearly put in a certain amount of emotional labour to stick together, to stay friends that long. Hmm. Uh, and that is different and special, I would suggest. I mean, yeah, all right, there's a bit of luck in it. I, 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 you know, but um, I think... You're, but, you're, yes, I also think there's something very... A, a lot of bands, I guess... Well, I, I don't know that. I, don't, I can't speak for too many of them, but I think are either formed by a, a core of people who then start to recruit other people or someone who has a very strong idea who then then auditions people and, and I think we 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 were sort of we were friends beforehand which is always helpful I think there was a sort of trust and a and a friendship that was established before the music happened um and so that's really that's really important and I also think that quite often in bands you get at the well sometimes more than one person who wants to be at the front and in our band that's absolutely not the case they, we have three people who definitely don't want to be at the front and one person who's really good at being at the front so it's it's i think sometimes when you're competing for uh for the sort of the spotlight i think that can be where financial problems come into it and ego problems and we we just never had that because we just yeah you know, it, was, it was never i wouldn't trade places for anyone but even with you know within our band and, and I know that Chris wouldn't either so it's we're just lucky that we're all happy with our roles and no one's a sort of frustrated front man or, or a frustrated singer or whatever so it's it's uh again that it, that's the sort of I guess that's the luck of the where we were placed and how and how we kind of all found each other but it, it, it definitely it does require maintenance of course I mean if things had fallen differently could you have been in Coldplay Ian? Uh... <laughs> This is well. I mean, I mean, I'm not musically talented enough, but there, you know, there's a lot. There is a slight joke in our in our home about the fact that well, you know, Will didn't know. You know, you I don't think. I mean, the, the story is that you hadn't played the drums at all before you picked the drums up and jammed. I guess you know, you filled in essentially. I don't know how true that actually is. It's partially true. It certainly was. I I had uh, I had played the drums a little bit in at, at school, but not um not to any well not since I was about 13 and uh not with any success I, I went to to audition for to get drum lessons and they said they said no they could you, we can't teach you so uh so where are they now we can't well, exactly. <laughs> um but I had played a little bit and I had a neighbor who had a drum kit so I, I maybe I heard it through the walls but my yeah it was more something that I I had I had I had picked up drumsticks in the past but i preferred playing the guitar and the and piano and stuff. So it was not completely from a base of zero, but pretty low. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's... It, so it could have been you, Ian. It could, it could have, have been. been me. I was in the wrong halls of residence though, James. That was the thing. I wasn't yeah. in Ramsey. I was in a different hall. So I wasn't, yes. you know, I knew a lot of people. And obviously, um, you know, mm. I, I knew Chris as well, as, as well as, well as mm. Will, but I wasn't, um, I wasn't there jamming. And I have no musical talent whatsoever. Well, yet. I think so add a yet, I think. Okay. 
you never it's, it's never, never too, too late, late to start yeah absolutely i guess so i guess so but no i'm not auditioning not auditioning at the moment so <laughs> that's the important thing um well i wanted to go back to something you said right right at the start in terms of the impact on on your kids of lockdown hmm. um because i guess your your oldest daughter is she in gcse starting to go into the gcse process at the moment well they're in the, they're not in the next year they're not in the british system they're actually an international school so they do the ib um oh, and yes. so they don't have exams in in that what they call grade 10 which is year 11 um, there's no GCSE equivalent. It's all on the diploma, which is like the A-levels at the end at 18. Um, but so, so I mean, we're very lucky in that e even had we been in the British system, uh, um, they wouldn't, n none of our kids would have been in exam years last year or this year. So we're fortunate um, to, to not have to have that as a, as a concern. Um, but it's just the general kind of, I think, especially for our eldest, it's a, uh, it's a time when you want to be, you know, straining at the leash and and being out there and making your own connections with with friends and, you know, it's a it's a glorious time that I remember it very well, uh, and just to not be able to do that with the freedom that that other years have been afforded is really is really tough. And to what all credit to our children, they've been amazing. They've been so brilliant, and my wife and has worked so hard to to keep you know as as much social contact you know within the rules as possible and working super hard to just make little things into big things and little you know taking making treats wherever we can for them um but it's it's been definitely hardest on on my eldest yeah for sure yeah. tk max is going to be overrun when it opens for the first day all the 14 year old girls 13 year old girls are going to, it's going to be a mass of teenage girls running for tk max <laughs> didn't you go last year james didn't you have a shopping trip with your daughter to is it tk max yeah, that was in the summer yeah yeah yeah, yeah, last yeah. Summer, yeah, yeah that, she was 12 then now she's 13 she's going to be going with her friends you see that's uh, yeah, that exactly. looks away. nine months later um see ya. i don't want to go with dad anymore he's old news that's yeah funny. i bet um well you talked about sort of making you know making the most of the you know treats and that kind of thing what kind of um sort of routines and rituals have you develop maybe in lockdown that you didn't previously have as a family to kind of make them you know to connect as best you yeah. can. yeah well I think like most people I think the first one first lockdown was a sort of a bit of a novelty and so and then we had such lovely weather and it was a I think the, the, the sort of appeal of a completely different kind of routine was much more was much more um obvious and so we one of my daughters every Friday night she would set up a quarantine bar at, uh, at 5 p.m. Friday, um, we'd all, you know, have a different theme each week and prepare a menu and we'd all, you know, meet outside for a, a San Pellegrino or a, or a beer for dad, you know. That, so that was just little things like that, but just trying to get out as much as possible, really. In, um, and again, easier in the first lockdown than it has been in, in the winter. Uh, but as much, as much kind of outside time as, as is manageable uh and getting things like when because now they they're at school they're sort of they're online schooling but in the daytime you know at lunchtime rather than another cooked meal or another kind of boring <laughs> another boring home cooked meal we send them out to go and get something down you know get get something a sandwich from the shops or something just any but any opportunity to experience a bit of sort of normality yeah. um is was is a, a prize i guess but it's it, it after a while, even that starts to wear a bit thin, I think they're saying, you know, my daughter today had the opportunity to go and get herself some lunch, but she just said, no, nah, I'm just going to, it's going to stay here. Coffee yeah. and cake. My, yeah. my, uh, my uh, bank statement came in this morning. Basically, I'm just spending money on coffee and cake, walking <laughs> to a cafe, getting coffee and cake. It's costing a fortune, but as you say, that little bit of, it's a treat, it's a reason to go out for a walk. Yeah. Um, I don't know what we're going to do in the next couple of weeks. The coffee and cake, it, we're going to have to bring it right back to, yeah. you know, once a week, once a month. Yeah. Be, there's going to be trouble coming on that front, I think. I got to admit, I'm, I'm too lazy to do that. I've, I've really, yeah, I've, I've really been in. Uh, it's a bit, it's a bit weird. And uh, she, my, my daughter had, she had a sports scholarship day uh, yesterday. So she mm. went and, and she went and um, she went and played sport for you know a few hours in the morning, that kind of thing. She came back and got picked her up and she said, I can't wait. It's just really nice just to do things with people. Mm. It's like it was like normal. And she's really excited about going back to school, even if it's yeah. just you know she's in year six. So they're kind of transitioning at 
the moment. Mm. Um, kind of getting their heads around sort of secondary school, as as are we getting our heads around secondary school and yeah. phones and buses and all these kind of things going oh, on. But yeah. she said it was just lovely. It was just lovely to spend time with people. Um, mm. And hopefully, my son will go the other way. He will be more kind of more involved and kind of sort of into it. Um, mm. Well, you're sort of talking about um, working together as a band mm. and. I don't. I mean, I know. I, I knew Chris was. Um, Chris was in America. I don't know where the, where the rest of you. I know where you, where you're based predominantly. Mm. But making music together. I mean, are you doing it remotely, or are you are you recording in the same way you used to? How do you? I mean, what are the mechanics of of getting together? Because I guess that so much of it is about the interaction and 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 being with each other in the same room. I would imagine. Yeah, I think um, in the old. In the very beginning, we used to spend a lot of time. Well, well, at the very, very beginning, you just you couldn't afford studio time. So you had five days and you had to make it work. And you were there for 24 hours a day and using up every minute you could. And then when things started to get a bit bigger and uh, we'd end up working very hard, really long hours over long periods of time, but maybe not being as productive as we would like. And on around our fourth record, we, we started working with Brian Eno and he told us, he said, for want of a better word, you, you, you work far too long, but nowhere near hard enough, which was an interesting concept. So he said he would, he, would work, he used to work four day weeks and short, kind of short windows of time, but incredibly intense. And so we started doing that a bit more where we book in two weeks work together in the studio and just it's it's incredibly intense and we know that we have you know there's work that goes on in between that and we can send things to each other and work on things in at home or in in studios in, you know here or in in los angeles um but then we we knew we we're always aiming for something and so the two weeks we work we are together it's very intense and but extremely productive um i think a lot of Decision making is quite hard when you're when you're remote, but especially with the time difference when something comes in and you need to make a decision about it, whether it's the business side of things or or musical. Um, and sometimes people, you know, we can run with ideas. I think when you're together, you get a constant feedback about how things are, you know, you're constantly taking the temperature of, of certain how things are feeling, either to do with a song or to do with whatever it is. And without that, that makes things a bit more tricky. But we have regular, we have a weekly call, much like, you know, in this sort of format, a, a Zoom call where we speak to each other. And uh, and that's been great. And then so, yeah, we aimed for these two week segments, which we try and do as, as regularly as possible. Um, uh, and then it's just, yeah, it becomes very intense, but very productive. Uh, and it's, it's kind of works out really well, actually. And, and with the technology now, there's so much, so many more options for connecting with each other and and to 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 create music remotely it's, it is possible it's not quite the same as being in the same room but uh it's it's a good way of bouncing around ideas for sure where does bring it back to, to fatherhood because you know i'm a fatherhood bore but where does where does that fit into the mix because um <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you know, I'll refer back to You Are Not the Man You're Supposed to Be, the book I, I recommended last week. And we had the author on here a few few weeks ago. He talks about, you know, multiple masculinities and how, um, and it's something we, we've discussed here and I've dealt with on Working Dads, the idea that at home you're a certain sort of person and at work you're a sort of certain person. And why aren't these two close, more closely aligned? Mm. I mean, is that, does that work for you? I mean, you know, do you go in the studio and, you know, talk about uh, what the rock stars talk about, drugs and existentialism? And then, you know, you go home and you're playing with your kids. Or do you all go into the studio and start talking about, you know, GCSE stress? And that, that just seems really, really weird to imagine that you're all standing around talking about nappies or whatever. But yeah. that may be part of the trick is that you're able to, those masculinities are closer to you, for you. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I suppose um, that's a good question. I think uh, for me, I can only speak for myself personally, but in terms of, in terms of uh, the four of us, I feel like my role in the band is a quite a similar one to my role in my family, uh, which is convenient <laughs> because it just, I think it's not a, um, yeah, I don't think it's as incongruous as it might be for other people. I think if, um, yeah, I, I just, 
a lot of my a lot of my responsibilities i think within the band are about being kind of grounded and uh pragmatic and realistic and hang on but have you thought about this and that kind of thing which is my default position i suspect as a dad as well i'm not the kind of perhaps not the the kind of crazy harebrained scheme tearing around the house kind of doing stuff i'm a bit more like my own father i suspect a bit more kind of uh, level and i think that uh that side of my personality has been really useful in our business because there are lots of opportunities to get carried away and to get to go you know when when money starts to come into it you know people can start getting ideas that are that are more and more kind of out there and crazy and take someone to go okay hold on let's just let's have a look at this shall we let's put our thinking hats on and so i suspect it makes for possibly yeah it's not not the most exciting member of the band but an important one nonetheless Ideas like what? Come on, were you going to get a Led Zeppelin style 747 or whatever at one point? Was that, did somebody suggest that? <laughs> then you'd be amazed. If, if you can think of it, it's probably been suggested by someone or other. <laughs> it's like Uncle oh. Will. Uncle Will keeping things on an even keel. Yes, I'm afraid it's that sort of, yeah, slightly boring. But, um, but I think, you know, I've been thinking about this a lot. I think it's a very important role, especially within a group of, within a group of uh, men. I think often it can possibly, it can get a bit sort of, as you were talking about, not necessarily toxic, but there's, there can be a sort of a race to outprove, you know, prove yourself to each other or to, you know, to outgun people or to, I don't know. Unfortunately, I'm not in that situation, but I think to have a, yeah, very competitive. Exactly. And we're just, in terms of our music, we're, we're, we're competitive when it comes to what we do as a band and how we put ourselves out there and, and that we're very ambitious, but there's no, there's not really a sense of competition between the four of us. Uh, and I think the way that our, the, the, the sort of the dynamics of our band work is that we've got people who are really brilliant and, and extremely advanced in certain areas. And then there's, there's a couple, a couple of us, myself included, who are a bit more sort of rounded and, and provide some balance. And so it's 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 really uh, it's a great thing to be part of a team where you know that everyone is playing to their strengths, and there isn't that sense of competition. Who wants to be the that you know the big the top guy or the the main person? Alpha, the alpha yeah. male. Yeah. Because there's there's no. I mean, there's there's absolutely no. There's no contest, and there's no. But there's no. There is no competition, which is just, it's a lovely position to be in. We're, we're, we're sort of, we're in a, we have a luxury of just, of, of being united. And the competition, I suppose, is, is with everything else and with everyone else. But within our band, it's just, it's really, it's a lovely, it's a lovely feeling to be part of a, of a team that really works. Did you just, did you freeze for a while there, James? Yeah, I, I did. I disappeared and then I dropped out and then I'm back again. So. It was like the Zoom equivalent of a cold shoulder. It's like, I'm not interested in what you're saying anymore. So I'm, I'm oh, telling my back. I'm really interested. That's I'm interesting. Interested. I'm like, this is amazing. This totally speaks to, I'm reading two books this week and it totally, you know, about how to disagree well and mm. masculinity and stuff. It's absolutely, oh. you know, a really good case study for both of those books. Um, we were just talking, um, I was just talking to Will just briefly about the, the words in... Um, orphans from everyday life and talking about this sense of getting back together and having a drink with your friends and that sort of thing mm -hmm. um, and I guess as we we look ahead is there anything in particular that we look ahead to the summer that you're really for this is a question for both of you I guess really that you're really looking forward to doing when you're allowed to do it uh well for me it's about I, I really want to see my dad I haven't seen him for a long time I haven't seen him since July uh he is bit, I mean he's fine which is great I talk to him every week uh and a couple of times a week and then but he's he's been very strict with the kind of no I don't want to I don't want don't want to jeopardize anything he's had his first vaccine which is great uh and but yeah it'd be nice I'd like to do that so I think that'll be is it March 26th or something like that we'll be able to or is it 29th I can't remember but when we when we can, when you can travel to see to walk outside with with someone who isn't in your household. I think that's that's the moment I'll be able to go and see him and he won't be able to he won't be able to deny me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> not your brother then. You're not that's not high on your list then. Oh it's very high, but it's just that's gonna be that's a very he lives in Australia, so it's a it's a that's a I mean the chance of getting into Australia are pretty slim. Yeah. 
for the next and, and he years. doesn't want to leave because he'll never get back in. No, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I'm yeah. resigned to the fact I probably won't see him in the flesh for a while. But again, we, we speak regularly and, and uh, we're in touch. So that's that's good. But I think that and, and seeing, yeah, just going out for some food. I, I've had enough of my own cooking. <laughs> I think I'd love for someone else to make me dinner. Guinness. Guinness is what I'm looking forward to. Mm. I, don't even, I, don't, I don't drink that much Guinness, but I never drink it at home. And just the other day, I suddenly got a sort of taste for, God, do you know what I'd really like is a Guinness. Mm. You know, I, just haven't, I, haven't, I haven't had a Guinness for a year, and I'm not even that big a fan, but sometimes <laughs> that's what I'll have at the pub. And it's like, oh, do you know what? That's really what I want now is a Guinness. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's something about something about a cold beer overlooking maybe the River Thames with a few mates, just a few chilled drinks. Yeah, that would be nice. Lovely. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Um, Listen, we better move on to the tips. Yeah, we, yeah time, exactly. Time's running down, and as mm. I said, we've got, we've got a drum lesson, not with Will, but, you know. <laughs> um, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with, well, since we're on lyrics, I'm going to just sort of do a sort of vaguely musical, this is, this is quite a complex tip, this one, this week. Stick, stick with it, all right? So, um, first of all, make a playlist, right? That is my, my first tip, because it's taking time for yourself. And we've, I'm assuming we all did it when we were young, like made up, you know, tapes and film, tape stuff off the radio and all the rest of it. And it feels like the sort of thing that teenagers do. But actually, just because you're a middle-aged man, it's okay to go on Apple and spend the evening having a dig around and making yourself a playlist. I think that's a, it's a good thing to do. When you do, uh, it's a bit like making a non-stop oldies playlist for Steve Wright, which is going to be my playlist on March the 8th. Yeah, it's not International Women's Day. It's me on Steve Wright's non-stop oldies day. Are you? Um, the scientist, the scientist by Coldplay is in there long before oh. I knew that Will was coming on this podcast because, uh, you know, the whole line about nobody said it would be easy, but nobody said it would be this hard has been very much my mantra for the first three months of this year. Um, yeah. And um, put some Blue Nile on there because I've been really getting into the Blue Nile recently again. Uh, and put some Annie Lennox on there because by the time this goes out, we'll be in the run up to International Women's Day. And uh, I strongly recommend it's a piece uh we'll put the link on the in the the show notes uh she wrote a piece three years ago about um how the way for feminism to succeed is to open a dialogue with men and it is one of if not the best uh argument or, or comment about feminism and the role of men in it that i've ever read and it's by annie lennox um who is you know great on all sorts of levels yes. um, so yeah make a playlist uh listen to steve wright on march the 8th and uh, yeah, get into the Blue Nile. Uh, that's that's my my slightly long and complex tip. Uh, <laughs> Three headed that one. Yeah, but it's all sort of tied together. You see, it's kind yeah. of all oh, there's, there's a thread there somewhere. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go next. Um, yeah, so uh, this one's quite a practical one. Energy switch time. Okay, so uh, if you're anything like if your house is anything like um, if your house is anything like my house, the heating's been cranked up. Heating's been on all winter, uh, in a way that it's not usually. Usually in the winter, kids are at school. I'm I'm in the study, underfloor heating on. We heat one room. Energy bills have gone up. Now is the time to change. So says money saving expert Martin Lewis. So if you haven't changed your energy bill yet, now it's time to look at it. That's a tip for dads and saving money. What more can you want? First of all, Martin Lewis says that every week in his email. It's, it's always the same stuff. Secondly, I know you and Will go back a long way, but he is an international rock star. And your tip when we've got an, in, an international rock star on that uh, is look at your heating bills. I mean, I, 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 there's something I that I like. It's, the, it's the, the personas and the masculinities thing again, isn't it? It's that, that, that clash of different, I don't know, we're all we're keep, the same. We're just keeping it real. Absolutely. You'll, you'll never be on checking, uh, checking your energy bills. Exactly. <laughs> well what's your, what's your tip for dads this week uh well for, i i tried to uh, in the year in fact when i spoke about when we had this year off i had one thing that i one challenge that i set myself which i did manage to achieve was i wanted to learn how to play blackbird by the beatles on guitar which i never it's not that difficult i just never put time aside to learn how to do it and so i i watched loads of youtube tutorials and i learned how to play it and so in this lockdown I set myself another challenge, which was to try and learn how to play uh, Nimrod, the Enigma Variations, Elgar, Edward Elgar on the piano. It's a stunning piece of music, but difficult because I don't read music. I, I've never learned to read music. And so it's all just trying to watch someone who knows how to play it and look at their, watch their fingers and, and, uh, and try and copy it. So I've managed to get the first sort of minute and a half now. So I'm pleased with that. So that, that try and learn 
learn learn a piece. If you play the music, try and learn a new piece of music. But the other thing, when I've been inspired by my wife, who's been who's been voraciously um, devouring podcasts, and I've never really got into podcasts until recently. And there are so many brilliant uh, things that you can listen to now, and things that are extremely niche, and some that are very broad. And so, listen to more podcasts. I think that's a great tip, especially on a podcast and an audio <laughs> version. And James, James for, for anyone watching this, James is so dumbstruck by that tip. He has, in fact, frozen again. So on that note, he may just disappear. And he's, so, he's not very happy with me. He's, he's, he's not. No, it's, it's nothing personal. Right. We're going to we're going to wrap up there. <laughs> I can't take my eyes off James. He was just literally staring. Um, it's quite crazy. Um, Will, thank you very much for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure to catch up and have a bit of a chat. And there we go. James has gone, which is maybe yeah, editing. Oh, it's fun. a pleasure. Thanks for having me. It's been nice to talk to you. And um, we will look out. And I think I'm sure there'll be lots of people looking out for news about new music from Coldplay at some stage in the future. Yeah. It's great to hear that you're back and recording. Yeah. And oh, as a last word, just wanted to say brilliant work, by the way, Ian. You're doing such a great job in, doing, in, in giving, giving a platform and a space for people to talk about these things. It's really important part of the big puzzle and i think I, I really think you've done a wonderful job in your business and also in this in this podcast so it sounds it sounds a bit patronizing to say i'm proud of you but i think it's a brilliant thing that you're doing so well done thanks mate i appreciate that no it's great it's great to have you on here james is back for those of you watching who, yeah. are, who are on the podcast james has reappeared uh, and we're going to call it a day there will thank you very much for being here james thank you very much this thank has you. been episode number 35 of lockdown dads uh we will be back next week for another episode and fingers crossed that the weather holds and that progress towards getting out and about for all of us continues to carry on so thank you everyone for watching and listening <laughs>